Hello everyone, welcome back to Blood Omen, Alexei here. And uh, in this part we will be completing the quest that we have started in the previous part. The quest to get to Nup Raptor's retreat and, in, well, in order to dispose of Nup Raptor himself. And where we are now is the village of Nachthole, which doesn't hold anything of value with the exception of that one artifact that I am about to get right about now. Of all the methods I employ, this is perhaps the cruelest. Causing my victim's body to shrink on itself, crushing bones and rupturing organs till the pressure inside bursts the sack of fleshy skin, spraying its contents for all to see. Yeah, that is pretty cruel, but to be honest, I personally do not agree that this is the cruelest method that Kane uses. I think there is one that is even worse than that, even though it's less, well, bloody and gory. So what we have here is an upgrade, another blood fountain. The blood of ages flows so sweet. Come, drink from us. The rain will do you no harm, for our blood preserves. And the reason why you saw me just blaze through Nachtholm without exploring anything is that there isn't really anything of value there with the exception of that one artifact. The primary value of Nachtholm is that it actually has a bunch of secrets around the place, but None of them we can safely get yet. And what I will actually do with secrets is I will be getting them, and I will be getting them on camera, but I will include them in a separate bon bonus video that I will post in the end of the Let's Play, and uh, where I will essentially collect all the secrets that I will have failed to collect during the main playthrough, which is essentially all the secrets that you have to go the extra mile to get. And in that bonus video I will talk about the ending of the game and the implications of it for the, well, for the entire universe of Nazgoth, even though the Nazgoth is a world, but, okay, no, <laughs> no matter. So, now this bad beacon will allow me to get back here, off camera. And uh, as we are going to... Well, now Raptors Retreat, I think it is about time that I explain what exactly Nup Raptor is. Uh, that is, he, well, he, what is his backstory and uh, how exactly is he important to the current storyline. Now, you remember that, because pretty much all we know at this point is that, well, from the cutscene and the explanations of Kane and Ariel, is that... His insanity hurts the pillars, well his insanity hurt the other guardians and that through that it hurts the pillars of Nosgoth and through that it hurts the Nosgoth itself. Uh, and that is true, however I think that uh, in order to fully understand it you need uh, some backstory. So, Nup Raptor was born to serve, yes, the guardians are born to serve as guardians was born to serve as the guardian of the Pillar of the Mind about 500 years ago, uh, well, 500 years before the current timeline, the time that this game, Blood Omen, takes place in. He was born the second, uh, the previous guardian of the Pillar of the Mind was killed or died or Shed whatnot. For me and these artifacts and uh, as uh, the guardian of the Pillar of the Mind, he gained a cer certain powers that are immortality and uh, a certain degree of control over mental and psychic abilities, plus things like uh, telekinesis and telepathy, etc. Unfortunately, he also gained a certain degree of mental instability with that, and coupled with the fact that he is uh, fiercely loyal to people he cares about, which is his, is not his power, it's his trait of character, it uh, led to some pretty bad things when his lover, Ariel, the Guardian of the Balance, well, the Guardian of the Pillar of the Balance, was killed. By the way, in order to prevent any confusion, what we saw in the cutscene was not how Ariel was killed. It was a slaying of uh, previous guardians uh, several centuries ago, before Nup Raptor, before that Circle of the Nine, I'm sorry. Before the circle of the nine, and now we will speak to this guy who will interrupt me. This lunatic was delighted to see me. 
Perhaps his madness would reveal a greater truth. The bastards and Stenchen Crow shun me as Nozgov shuns them. I know what it means to be an outsider vampire. I fear you not. But remember this, there are others who will speak to you. So long as you know how to look. That guy's name is Irmok, by the way. Irmok the Mad. So, in any event. Uh, what we saw in the opening cutscene was the murder of uh, a previous, or one of the previous Circles of Nine by vampire Vorador. And it is not a backstory for an Upraptor, it is a backstory for a different Guardian, for Malak, and we will touch on that in later parts when we will get to him. So, uh, when his lover Ariel was killed, Napraptor grew insane. The Gypsies, purveyors of distrust and superstition. <laughs> Most of their babble should be taken with a pinch of salt, since the Gypsies often tinker with weary travelers' minds. However, a few Gypsies have something interesting to say. There are benefits to traveling beneath the human guise. The threat to my person is lessened and much information can be gleaned. However, the illusion is flimsy, and any act of aggression on my part can break the spell. So, as I was saying... Napraptor grew completely insane. But the thing is... It is stated in the game that it is this insanity that is corrupting the Nosgoth. Well, there are, in fact, different ways of uh, interpreting this, of uh, thinking about how exactly does the insanity that afflicted Napraptor harm Nosgoth. Napraptor's keep lay west of Vasabunt. I would seek to cut the cancer from its heart. And yeah, his place is a big skull. Yes, that's exactly what it looks like. Yes, the guy is insane. The guy is completely mother bad insane. But the thing is, this game, it says to us that it is this insanity that corrupts the Nosgoth, but it's not clear how that's happening, because while Napraptor is clearly insane, he is in fact the only character afflicted by this curse who displays such insanity. There is one more character who has, well, PTSD and another character who is kinda insane, but pretty much, pretty much everyone else who is supposed to be afflicted by this, well, insanity is basically just a selfish asshole and not someone who is insane. So, uh, and the different... The following games, they are actually not always talking about insanity. They often talk about the curse or just generic corruption. The wind carried screams from the west. I couldn't help but smile. Someone else in this world was suffering more than I. So the other games, they use the word terms corruption and curse. Uh, why is it used? Well, because uh, sometimes the story is interpreted as if it wasn't the corruption from Napraptor that seeped into the minds of fellow guardians, but that it was actually a psychic blast from Napraptor himself because he suspected the other guardians to be basically traitors, which is kinda not, which is not exactly without a, a reason, but I will not speak about that because it will spoil everything, and I will not be doing that. So. Yes, the other guardians, the other characters afflicted by the curse don't really show any signs of actual insanity per se, they're just selfish assholes. And as such, I think that... We should not be talking about the mental state of the guardians, but rather about the f them being corrupted. Even though... The came in the beginning of the game, the first time after we saw the pillars and Ariel was talking about the deteriorating mental state of the Guardians. But, as I already stated, Nap Raptor is completely insane. The guy has soon 
his eyes and mouth shut simply to uh, close himself off from the outside world and to be able to uh, bathe I know his in his own misery and self-pity Kane will lampshade it and that is absolute true The gaping moor of Nupraptor's retreat rained upon Nosgoth all his pain and misery. The disease begged to be cleansed. By the way, speaking of sewing eyes shut, we, uh, what we actually saw in the cutscene where Ariel was giving us the basic explanation of what is going on here, we, that uh, well, telepathic projection, uh, that's what I think it is, was actually showing Nupraptor telekinetically sewing his own eyelid shut. And um, if you ask me, that is pretty damn grim. But yeah, I think that Nupraptor is the only one who is actually insane at the, and the other characters who are afflicted by this curse are simply corrupted and assholes, but they're not insane. And this is the Nupraptor's Keep, and I will save the game, and I will see you next time, because this part is so dark, it's very dark, and it's very atmospheric, and I will not be speaking over it. No. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. Goodbye.